some people uh, treat like a camera, like like someone's pointing a gun at them. I've seen people like it's the worst thing in the world. And uh, for me, it was just normal. It's just I don't I don't know why. Maybe in my past life, I was Humphrey Bogart or something. I don't know, but yeah, it's just normal to me. The hangar is, is crazy enough. A bunch of hundred thousand dollar HD cameras really doesn't make it any more crazy. It just it's something extra you got to do. The one thing about the camera. Is, is is something like you know something stressful happens and then right there they're in your face and you gotta like relive exactly what you just said and did like what's going on right um like that's sometimes the last thing you can ever 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 want is just it's just like okay i just got yelled at for 10 minutes um i don't really want to i just going to start forgetting about what just happened now i got to relive it when people ask me about my father it's uh also, like, how is he in real life and stuff like that? And I'm like, well, technically, here you watch him in real life. Uh, you know, at home he's a lot different than he is at work. And on screen, you're you're being shown one side of him. Um, but the extremities on on film, I, I would say, are actually almost dumbed down. Um, in real life, he is he is more uh, crazier than he, he's portrayed on film for sure, because he can definitely fly off the handle. I'm referencing the show now. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was like episode 12, two. Like, so it is, it is, it's became history. You know, like the, the history is written by the victor. Well, history is written by the show because I don't even remember what really happened. The film crew is surprisingly a lot like pilots. You know, they're very transient. Um, they're various, uh, like I'd say lower part of society where they live paycheck to paycheck and they scramble for food. So it's just like pilots. Hey. <laughs> you know, there's cameras sitting here shooting, you don't really believe you're being made into a TV show. You just think it's normal, right? And then all of a sudden you see it on screen and it's just like, I, I, I would have to, I would ha almost have to say, it's almost like, I guess like having a kid, I didn't have, don't have a kid, but you, you put all this time and effort in something for like nine months and all of a sudden, boom, it's there. And you're just like, you can almost, you can almost think it wasn't there until it's put in your lap. So this TV show, it was, you know, most people didn't even believe it was happening. They just said, who would waste their time following this around? And all of a sudden, bang, it's on your, it's on your lap and you got the show. So it is an emotional experience for sure. In season one there, there was a, there was a cake episode where I built, uh, I made a cake for my father. And, you know, I, I wanted to do it all by myself and blah, blah, blah. And it was like literally maybe 10 minutes. Right, they've been filming 1,300 hours. There's this 10 minute little skit we did with the cake and it just it explodes. Like I went to the grocery store the other day and five separate people came up to me and were bugging me about cakes. Are you making a cake and stuff? So you can, what I learned from that is you can't predict what comes good across good on TV. Like it, the, it, you can have the most craziest airplane do the most craziest stuff and it might not make it on film. You know, you spend $64 building a cake in a box and it makes it on screen. You can come in the back door here at Buffalo and figure it out that, you know what, aviation isn't really glamorous. It's, uh, it's just like any other job and you gotta work hard. And so we're not saying, every, like not everyone can get a chance to come up here to get all night and, you know, and work for no money and long hours. So hopefully they get to enjoy it in the comfort of their home and sitting on their couch, on the couch with the big HD TV, so. Emails, like there's a book of emails, literally, um, about this much, like sitting in the office right now, people saying, hey, yeah, I really love the show, and oh, by the way, I have a, a, a factory in, in New Brunswick that makes mittens. Would you want us to send you some mittens in school? And some really pe cool people send us products, and we're looking, you know, it's just, people really just want to be part of the show, and you know, this really cool guy in, uh, Ontario sent us a bunch of meat. Yeah, I guess he's got this meat place and we got we got to eat sausages one day, which was kind of cool. And, and all he wanted was a picture with us holding a sausage. So I guess it's a mini Canadian endorsement. You get paid with food, I guess, but we'll see. We'll see how it happens, but it's been fun. You see Buffalo Airways in HD like, you know, like 150 times during the episode. So people people can recognize that name and it's building Buffalo Airways as a name. And I'm hoping that you know, after season two, that you ask a four-year-old kid in Newfoundland, name three airlines, he'll say Air Canada, WestJet, and Buffalo Airways. You always hear the cliche, you know, people saying, well, 
uh, you know, I'm happy to you welcome me into your homes and stuff like that. And I never really got it until people come up to you and they and they feel that you know you, and you they really have welcomed you into their home. Like really, they they you know they go on the website and they they do all the different content and then they they become part of the show themselves. So which is which is really cool.